I am really happy and excited to have our guest joining us today, um, Adi Hanash. Adi is the lead of online education at GA, at General Assembly, and he's been building out the online version of the General Assembly Web Development Immersive for the last few months. Um, I think most of us are aware of General Assembly. If you're researching coding boot camps, I'm pretty sure you've heard of General Assembly and awesome. their web development immersive, yeah. <laughs> but starting on May 16th, remote students who can't make it into the GA classroom will actually be able to take WDI online. Um, but it can be really tricky to research online coding boot camps. I know this, everyone knows this. So luckily, Adi is here. He's going to answer all of our questions about the learning platform, outcomes, and the curriculum in WDI Remote. He's even going to um, share his screen and show us what the actual learning platform looks like. So really exciting stuff. Okay, well, Adi, will you share your screen and show us the WDI remote platform? Of course. Okay. <clears throat> so you're going to see yourself, I think? Yes. Okay. Hi. So what we've done for WDI remote is we've actually really focused on a variety of ways for people to communicate. So our primary education, like our platform, is Slack. Slack is a thing that developers use consistently. People are love it, it is like a cult thing. And so with Slack, what we're able to do is set this up as our primary tool. This is where you'll see slides dropped in, the, the, the content that the instructor will be going over uh, described here. Um, and you'll also be on Zoom, which is a video audio, audio conferencing platform similar to like Google Hangouts. So okay. you'll actually be able to see your instructors, all of your other classmates. The reason why we really like Zoom for this pilot is that it provides you the opportunity to be able to like just see everyone and to be represented in video as well. Mm -hmm. So throughout the class, you're going to actually be able to see, talk to, interact with your classmates in a variety of ways. So Slack provides us a lot of really cool things, and this is where you get really excited. And like, as an online education person, I really nerd out. Yeah. Is that you're able to get people to interact with the content, to be able to answer questions, Mm -hmm. put in uh, screenshots of the work they did. Uh, this is my HTML site that I've been building, mm -hmm. which I think is a very important uh, use of H1 through H2 tags, or H3 tags. Absolutely. Um, so now you have ways to interact, to see, to, uh, to monitor. But also what's exciting is that throughout the class, you can hashtag concepts. So the instructors yeah. will be like, hashtag CSS float right. And now later on, if the student wants to look it up, they can actually use the search feature to be able to find the specific lesson or to the specific day that that was covered. Cool. So the way we've even broken it down is that we'll be recording all of the audio and all of the other content as it's going. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we'll be sharing a link. Uh, so at the end of each lesson, we'll, we'll paste the link for that recording. So theoretically, a month down the line, if you wanted to go back and revisit, or if you miss a day of class and you want to go revisit, you go to the recording, you hit play, you pull it up on your second screen, and then you can actually start at the top of the lesson, and it's like you're in the classroom. Interesting. So, okay, cool. Okay. I think for somebody who's taken like an online, like traditional, traditional university, university class online, this uh -huh. will be refreshing. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the goal is that we're making it so interactive. So you can be direct messaging classmates. You could be direct messaging a group of your classmates. You can direct message your instructor um, or one of the IAs, instructor associates in the room, if you have mm -hmm. a question and don't necessarily want everyone in the class to see it. So, Does, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it just provides a, a variety of ways to interact with each other that is just so community building mm -hmm. because Slack is kind of just awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Do, you, are, are students able to like pair through Zoom? Is that possible or are they using something else to like uh, interact with each other's computers or does that happen a lot? Ah, so that that's the so this is the first monitor. One thing we realized when we were when one thing we wanted to, we realized when we were kind of studying and analyzing our web development immersive course is that inherently every student had two monitors. They had their computer screen that they were working on, and then their projector up at the front, the what was being projected onto the onto the whiteboard. Yes. And so one thing I've noticed by looking and trying to research in this space is that like a lot of times you get people trying to just work on one computer to do this. And so they're constantly flipping back and forth between two or three things right. in order to like follow along. And the experience is really kind of subpar. 
So our, our students for web development immersive remote are actually required to have an external monitor. Okay. Make the experience smoother, but also because like it's pretty much industry standard that developers work with an external monitor. True. Yeah. So, so this is how we can conduct a lot of the interaction. We're using a, a interactive coding environment called Cloud9. Cool. Um, we partnered with them to bring the ex the experience online. So every student will have their own IDE, um, their their online coding environment, and they'll be able to in this case stay in like the you'll usually have two of these open one will be your instructor screen so everyone will be able to follow along with their instructor and see what he or she is typing as he mm -hmm. or she types it you can highlight sections of the code um pardon me you can highlight sections of the code you can even open your own workspaces uh as it's going on that's cool and you'll actually be throughout class You'll be seeing what your instructor is doing, and then you'll have a few minutes to do it on your own. And so you'll be like, okay, now I've got to set this up and start on my own information. Yeah. And then going through and working. So you're actually working in multiple, uh, two environments. One is the entire classroom, and then in this environment, if you want to, if it's a paired programming situation or group project, you actually then add people, and you can actually share this with three other people or two other people and now you're working in a collaborative online environment. And what's really cool is it also tells you like, if, I, if the instructor comes into your like project and is like saying like, just check, check in, see how you're doing, they can actually see who's writing which line of code mm -hmm. so that they can give proper feedback to the right person. Interesting. So this is the environment in which they're gonna work and then they'll communicate usually through uh, Slack calls or, or through Zoom in terms of video. Okay, cool. So we're looking at Slack, Zoom, Cloud9, any other like tools or like anything proprietary that that GA is like built for the remote yeah. class? Or those so are three main ones. These are the three main ones right cool. now. We're in the process of kind of testing. I mean, we are running this as a as our pilot program. Yeah. And we've designed it to work on these. And as we go through, we'll be kind of looking at what the right approach to building this out on our own is. Sure. Um, Cloud Nine in particular uh, is a very like malleable workspace environment that would provide us a lot of flexibility and customization. 